about this. I sit on the board of Women in Google. Um, so now I have a feeling I'm going to learn quite a bit from Lisa. So please welcome Lisa to the stage. Who am I and who let me up here? And where did this talk come from? I am a senior field engineer at the Home Fire Mom. The company has been around since 2013 or 2010. I'm the first female field engineer. Um, my handle on Twitter for well over a decade has been the token female because I've been in technology for over 30 years now. And for over 30 years, I have been the first and or only woman, woman anywhere I've been. This started back in the dark ages when dinosaurs were on the earth when I was 14 years old. Moved from a very urban community, lots of honors classes, lots of things going on, to central Illinois. 1,200 people, five churches, four bars, three gas stations. This was not a thriving metropolis of education. And I go to high school, and they said, great, I'm a freshman. Here's your schedule. And some people, I, I was in honors classes. I've taken all this stuff before. They're like, you don't understand. You're a freshman. This is your schedule. All right, then. The math teacher got himself a grant to get some computers. Yes, this is something new. I have a plan with this. I signed up to be in the computer class Tuesdays and Thursdays after school. And they patted me on the head and they said, my child, I realize you're a girl, right? Why don't you come over here and sign up for home ec? That ended about as well as you might expect, because I am an early virgin as fuck. Game on, guess who ended up in the computer class? That's my technology career in a story. Where did this talk come from? I have been in technology for over 30 years. I was actually having a venting session with some female colleagues, not in my company, but similar vein. And I had had a run-in with one of our clients. I was asked to come in. I worked in the utility space for a while, which is regulated by New York State Network. And our installation team, they came to me, you are our compliance goddess. You have worked in the utility space. You need to come talk to my people over here. They have nerve sick questions. I get on the phone. And this gentleman begins to talk, and he begins to talk over me. And he says, Dear, you can't possibly know anything about nerve sick. We will come to Jesus. By the time we got off the phone, his team was telling me, telling him, Shut up, talk to this woman. I said, You know, if you have questions. Call me up, so let me be very clear to you that if you ask me about your step, you're getting Lisa's opinion, you're not getting the official fire on the line. And his team is telling him, you need to call her. But I'm having this event session with these women, and I'm like, 13 years later, why are we still having these conversations? What are, what, what are, we, what are we doing wrong? What do we need to be doing differently? And a couple of them, significantly younger than I am, said, you know, how do we handle this? So I went through this and I went through some other examples. And they were like, no, we should do a talk on this. So I reached out to a bunch of people I know in the industry, and I reached out to a bunch of people in my local women's network. I talked to a lot of people who want to tap on this topic. And I have about 50-50 mix. Let me tell you all things. And I want to hear this talk. So here we are. Bias. There's a Maya Angelou line, when people show you who they are, believe them. There's a lot of gaslighting around bias. If you feel like it's bias and you can sit back and say this is a personality conflict, it probably is. If you're an ally and someone says this is bias, believe it. I talk to people in the computer repair industry. Um, the lady in the computer repair industry said she would get men who didn't like her answer about fixing their computer. One of them said I would call the cops on you. 
I talked to a lady with a degree in automotive technology. She says the only job I get is dispatch. Manufacturing. Architecture. One of my good friends is in architecture. She says it's a classic. The whole industry is. I present my idea, everybody ignores it. John Isn't that a great idea, John? Yeah. I talked to a lady in you know, a two hour lunch in the As much of a shit show as cyber is, this almost brought me to tears. The things that this woman has dealt with. This is a worldwide problem, it's not a cyber problem. We're doing better than some industries, and considering what the show is, that's dealing with some really great rights. So I took all of this information and put it in my pot. And so let's figure out where our common is. We talk a lot down here. Some examples of bots. You should just get along. We, we know we don't jump, we don't John's good old book. Can't you just make an effort? That's a general problem. That's not a least problem. Learning, I see so much learning confidence. Can't you just do this for me? You're better. I walked into meetings that I was expecting to run and been asked, Can you make a coffee? I'm going to guarantee you if there's not a K cup involved, you never want me making your coffee. Not once. The beverage lady, there was a lot of physical harassment. I've had physical harassment. I have been in a duty discovery. I've been in an office to do legal investigation. Next thing I know, the guy that's six foot five is leaning over and looking down the shirt. It's not okay. The stories that Taylor told me were just phenomenal. Megan, one of my good friends, recently left the MSP world. She's getting on deck. Raised my hand for her earlier. She's been on tech. She can't do it anymore. She's going back to being an analyst for a hospital. She'd walk into the meeting. Oh, good. Maybe it's here. You can take notes. She looked at him and said, You can take your own damn notes. But there's only so much of that that you can do for it's just so wearing. Speaking over. The gentleman who told me I didn't know anything about Narcissip talked over me. He had been around with that day. I don't usually lie about that. The idea theft. Same thing Eric keeps running into. Eric had a great idea. Wasn't that a great idea, Johnson? That be? A lot of physical posturing. Earlier in my career, I saw a lot of this. I would dis I'd disagree with anybody. Disagree with somebody, and they'd come up to me and they'd stay in the room. It's the physical intimidation. I don't intimidate very well. Senior or diversion? But man, that, that's rough for a lot of people. I can't ever say the way I feel because there's any way that most people do with this. I work pharma. We recently probably lost a deal because I was the engineer. This gentleman had one of the hardest core cases of subtle misogyny I've ever seen. To him, I, I was the engineer. I was running your proof of concept, but I didn't exist. Thought it was just me. Thought maybe you know this guy. Just had an issue, maybe he wasn't really interested in the platform. Till the day we had a problem, I bought one of my colleagues on the call. 180 attitude change. Adam is the best person in the world. For engaged. PC, here's what we've done, here's what we're going to do. Next call, it's just me. We have total disengagement. So, I'm talking about my director. My director is my biggest proponent. He hired, I, think, tell, I tell him on a regular basis, you hired me, so you got to put up with me. <laughs> and he gets on the call, he says, yeah, This guy can't be that bad. I said, Nate, come, come listen. Nate gets on the call, we're troubleshooting someone, complete and total 180. Engagement. Here's what we've done. Here's what we're going to do. You guys are fabulous. You guys are this. Next call. There's no guy. Well, this thing. I don't know what to do with that. This is one I honestly couldn't solve. Presumed incompetence. You're a girl you don't know. I see that with our female sports staff. 
I've had it teach it when you've got teach the guide probably. My answer is no. Hiring promotion practices. We've all seen guys fail upward. We've all heard women have to be twice as good as we thought was half as good. Plenty of access to opportunities. I've been a recruiter and all that. I am prior months of the female field engineer. And I was talking to somebody in, in the industry, not one of ours, and he kind of verbally pats me on the head and he says, but dear, I don't run into women that want to be a field engineer because you know they've all got children and stuff at home and they don't want to do the track. Have you asked him? He wasn't very happy. Did you see how she dresses? I can't believe she dressed like that for that meeting. Did she dress up a little bit more on her clients? Judging what they wear. Let's just, let's just, let's just get some general notes down here. We're so cleaned up before she puts out the minutes. Sadly, that one's the one thing I probably do. I have a great mouse here. Not letting me finish the sentence. Presuming you know what the woman in the room is going to say, so you're going to finish it. She's just a dumb blonde. I've heard that one recently from somebody. Lift them up to Jokes. This is where we get the gas up. Oh, just kidding. John was just kidding. It's not just a good fun. But where's it stop? The lack of leadership representation. I used to call Fireman's last CEO out of this. What's that? What part is Gage? The only non white guy out there is you. And you're, only, you're the only person of color out there. What's up with this? He committed to me to do better? Love him. Also had this conversation with our current CEO. We're working on that. We need to be where the things are happening when you see things are happening. We need to move on. How do you counteract that? This was interesting because I have hundreds of pages of interviews. And it came down to some strategies. My very favorite one, actually the first two are my favorites. Silence. I was stuck. When was my most recent experience with misogyny? Last week. Good client. I find people in this to be interesting. I would probably sit down with any person in this room and have a great conversation. This guy's a joke. Ask me a question about our platform, I get half a sentence in and start talking over me. That's it. Don't be afraid of silence. Just stop. The silence on the call started to get more uncomfortable. He's, he stopped. Trying to trail off. I'd start again. He started talking over me. I stopped. Let it get uncomfortable for a minute. Don't be afraid. Let things get a little uncomfortable. The third time he did it, I started to talk. He, he starts up. I stop. Silence starts to get uncomfortable. I said, Sir? You let me know when it is my turn. And then I will finish. And he stopped and I finished. Can you explain it to me as one of my favorite ones for gaslighting? Or inappropriate, or it's just a joke, honey? I don't understand that one. Can you explain it to me? And let the silence sit. Know who your allies are. Know who you count on. I've had some fabulous allies on the time. Know who you can look at in the room and back you up. Know who you can let know in advance. My director, I let him know. Here's going to be an issue. Who can you prep them in advance? I'm going to get some back up here. Physical positioning. This one came most strongly from the director of the Women's Center in Lansing. She says, when I am getting overwhelmed or trying to get funding sources by then, I will stand up. I will stand up, I will put it forward, and I will hold my space. And that's part of where this talk might be. 
Boulder Space. Back to my story with Joe Leslie coming up. Especially if somebody's talking over me. Are you done? It's my turn now. Remember to breathe. This one's hard for me, I believe it's too wound up. Stop, take a breath. Get comfortable with the silence. Reframe the problem back to them. I'm asking you if the sky's blue and you get to tell me why it's green and I'm wrong. John, I'm going to get back to my original question here. We were talking about the fact that the sky is lovely blue. I hear you telling me it's green. I don't understand how your answer relates to the question I'm, answer, I'm asking. Can you reframe for me how you got there? Let them justify themselves. When they get totally out of hand, let's get back to the point I was making. Again, I will let that side stand for a minute. Let's revisit the point I was trying to make. Eve. This actually came, I, I interviewed women, non binary female presenting women, some trans women. One trans woman I talked to said, I will get up and leave. Is that bad? I will just get up and leave the conversation. And I will say, we can revisit this when you calm down. And get wild up and get in your face. Five levels of why is an investigative technique, but it works really well, really well for this too. Well, I don't think we should do it that way. Why? Well, we've always done it this other way. Why? The theory is that if you ask why five times, you're going to get down to the root of the problem. But I've also found this is really useful for getting down to the root of someone that has a problem with you. Or has a problem with the fact that you're a joke woman. Why? We're talking about this why. And get down to what their true objection is. A lot of times by the time you're down, they don't five, they don't have one anymore. Consider the consequences. This is a point that some women made me, including a distinct theory for IBM. There have been times in my career I've had to let things slide simply because I thought it might cost one job. I am not wired quite right. I very rarely think that way. I probably should. Sometimes you can't make the stand. I've probably made it sometimes that were very inadvisable. And then the third last one, if I could turn it into a joke, I will. I tell people regularly on all my demos, I may not be brilliant, but I'm almost fine. And we have a good time. So if you can use a combination of the silence and the humor, a lot of times you can get it back on track. Bigger picture. This is from an organizational standpoint. What do you fight for your companies? If you're in charge of something at your company, what can you do? And, and I will tell you, I've had this conversation with Carmon CEO. We ask everybody to sit down and have 15 minutes with it. I'm like, you know, when we can ask for this, we're going to talk about these things. Education and training. If you want to have consequences for people doing something that you don't believe is right in the company, you've got to teach them as well. You've got to walk them through some training and you've got to walk them through something besides the CBT that we're computer based training for all tap to do once every year. How quick can we get through this and switch to the other tab? Have some clear policies on what is acceptable and what's not. Diversity and inclusion. Somebody in an earlier talk that I listened to said, take the gender-based language out of your postings. I've talked to our HR department about this. Did you encourage reporting? Have a way to report reporting being anonymous? And make sure there are no repercussions, not even in Diversity. Diversity. We've got to hire good people. We've got to hire people who look like people in this room. Back to the conversation I had with Simon there, there are five guys up on that stage who are we're white. You're middle aged, you're all middle aged guys. We need to do something different here. Gender neutral language. We have recently hired a wonderful, spectacular, non binary person in the door now. But that's the first one I've seen publicly in the company. We've been around for years. Why are we fighting for this now? We need everybody to have a seat at the table. We've got a better table now. Compensation equity. I know for a fact there have been times in my life I've been hired, I've been paid less than I've been working. 
People talk about women leaving cyber. There have been some studies done on women leaving cyber because they have to do enough job hunt to get away from this kind of garbage, but they end up getting passed up for the promotions and the raises and the things that will move them up the evolutionary scale. If Firemont sucked, I could leave. I'm probably not going to get a promotion, I'm probably not going to get a pay raise. Somebody who sticks that out is going to. Work life balance, don't have life somebody. Early in my career, I worked for a very large technology company that I shall not name. I had two kids at we were allowed six, six days per year. I was written up on my year-end evaluation because I had taken five of them. I was not even at what I was allocated. But I'd taken five, and that was too close to the line. Regardless of whether or not somebody's got kids, because that's not that's a legally objective question, we've got lives. We've got things where we need to do other things. Encourage your people to do that. Back in leadership representation. Employee resource groups. We've recently started women at Firemont. It's freaking awesome. Kind of happened by accident, but it's happening. And don't ever quit asking the questions. This is a hard one. And somebody actually expressed, I understood the concept, but I didn't phrase it as well. Help is defined by the one you have helped. I screwed this one up. I screwed it up personally very recently. I had a friend with a personal issue. I know how to solve her problem, and I kept charging her little bit of a china shop that I am. And that's not what she needed. She did not need me to come fix her problem. She needed me to hear her problem and understand it. So if you're in a situation where you've got somebody who has asked you to come be an ally, Come be Nate, sit on my call. Find out what they want from you. Don't presume you know how to do this. It's been a few weeks, but I still don't know the baddest we don't know. There's a difference between a mentor, an advisor, and a sponsor. All of these people can be allies, but they're going to have different roles in your life. Mentor, mentee, one of my best allies. He sent me a note this morning. Congratulations for speaking at Diana. I'm proud of you. Sean was my mentor for probably close to a decade. We've been friends for over 15 years now. About five years back, he came to me and he said, You've got around me. We are friends, we are family, but I, I can't be your mentor anymore. You have outgrown what I can offer. They are generally looking at the overarching picture of your life. They're looking at personal success. They're looking at professional success. They're looking at how to make you a better you. I've had some great mentors. I've had some great mentees. Um, Megan, who left the MSSP space, was a mentee of mine for a lot. So she got to a point where her career was going in a direction I couldn't follow. Wasn't that I didn't want to mentor her. I didn't have the experience to help her overcome the challenges she was coming in there. It wasn't my role. An advisor is going to be somebody with a specific area of focus. Um, I have been an advisor for people that need some maybe digital forensics experience. I can help them with a the digital forensics problem. I can help them in that space. Don't know. I want to say don't care, but it's not that they don't care. I don't have any reason to involve myself in the rest of your life. That may be legal. That may be a skill you're learning for a position. It's going to be generally going to be more time limited than a mentorship, but it's going to have a very specific focus and quite often it's professional. And then a sponsor, you have a sponsor at work, go get one. Sponsor, fundamentally to me, and I'll argue I'll the definition with anybody that can broaden my definition, I welcome that. Somebody hired the food chain from you that wants you to succeed. Get a sponsor. I've had a manager as a sponsor who was consistently the person who, when I said something at a meeting and somebody else tried to take credit, you know, I thought I heard Lisa say that five or ten minutes ago. Let's make sure it gets the meeting that she came up with that she came up that first. They will network you, they will put you in a position to get high visibility projects. 
they are invested in your success because your success is not threatened. How to be an effective ally. Be willing to draw a line in the sand. This is one of my favorite stories. This actually came from somebody I interviewed and a CEO I used to work for. He had a client call him up. He's in the office with a female security person. Was the guy the speaker? And the guy goes, Hey, yeah, I, I need somebody out here. I've got this problem. I need somebody on site. Can you send them off the tits? And this was within the last five years, people. This is not ancient history. The lady that I interviewed kind of lit him up, left the office. The CEO called him up later in the afternoon and said, if you ever say that about or to one of my people where I can hear you, you're no longer a client. If you're going to be an ally, where can you draw a line? Where can you support those people? Question everything. Question diversity. I will question why we're hiring you a white guy. Again, I'm the bull in the China shop. If you've got an opportunity to ask the question about what we're doing and why we're doing it, do it. If you're in a hiring position and they're bringing in white guys over and over, what can we do differently? If you've got a woman on staff and you realize she's making 75% of what her male colleagues are, why? Can we do a salary true up across the organization? Let's just make sure everybody's equitable. Again, ask them what they need. Ask them what they need. Nate and I have a signal. He knows he will come in and he will try and take over the call. We've got a signal for him to know. Kind of back up and kind of let him talk. I respect him a lot if you did that. Take opportunities to give other people credit. I love to give other people credit. We have a shout-outs channel in our Slack. I love to tell people what other people are doing. Got an opportunity, especially if you're somebody that's a minority or female or more marginalized in your organization, you have a chance to say, hey, look what this person's doing. It's not cake. You're not going to take away from yourself by giving it to somebody else. Be willing to confront that problematic behavior. My favorite line, and I've actually used this at our game night too. We've got some non-binary people, we've got a couple trans people that come. We'll occasionally get new people to make a comment. And I was looking at the United States, we don't do that here. I'm not telling you you're an asshole, we don't do that. It's not confrontational. We don't do that here. That's not our body. They either get it or they don't come back. I don't want to exclude anyone. I want everybody to come to this event. But I'm also not going to let them make hate on them because they want to be a jerk. Solicit input. I've seen this at conferences. It's awesome. The guys are sitting up front. Questions, comments, they're raising their hand. Hey, I heard from you. Can you tell me your thoughts on this? Pick out people in the room that you're not hearing from. And then be aware of who is routinely getting marginalized. So now with your team, work on strategies. How can we make sure these people all get heard? This is one I'm working on. Someone recently handed me this tool recently. Walk into somebody who doesn't have the same experience. What does your experience tell you about this? I haven't lived your experience. I haven't lived in your experience. But if there's somebody in the room that I'm not hearing from, what has your, your experience been like with this? Always let them speak rather than say, cat things. Make sure that they're, they're speaking in their own voice. <coughs> My line that I use pretty much everywhere is walk just walk in general. None of us are any better than anybody else. I believe so strongly everybody needs a seat at the table. What can we do to make it better for everybody? Look at your organization, look at your life, look at the people around you and say, well, what can I do to make a difference? Got my tattoo plan, this is my cardiology student to me. My work life, I live this way, my personal life, I live this way. You may or may not have heard the start of the story. Well, 
then the young boy walking on the beach. The young boy is picking up starfish and he's throwing them back in the ocean. And the old man says, what the hell are you doing? There are thousands of starfish out here. You are not going to make a difference to this. This problem is insurmountable. And the young boy picks up a starfish, and throws it back in the ocean, and he looks the old man and he says, I made a difference to that. And that's what I've tried to do for the last 30 years. We're not going to fix this today. But what starfish can we throw back? And how are we going to make a difference to that? That's what I got. I will connect with anybody. I share job postings. I share whatever. What kind of answer? What kind of help? Yes. Thank you, Lisa. That was great. You mentioned um, when your mentor told you about Rumi. Yes. How do you recommend approaching the conversations as when as a mentee you're going, okay, I feel like I, I might wrap this up and move on to someone else? How do you recommend navigating that? I've done that actually. And what I did was, you know, I would. It's not somebody I was as close to as the mentor that brought me. But I just said to him, you know, I really appreciate everything you've done for me. I'm also a terminal volunteer. You know I'm doing stuff with the rescue. You know I'm doing stuff with Lasagna Love. My, my free time spent a lot with Lilith. So I decided I'm going to focus on this other area of my career. And I want you to be able to free your time up to work with people that really appreciate your skill set. Are you actively looking for a mentee? I'll keep an eye out for someone for you. But I don't think we need to be. I try to leave it on a really positive note that way. Yes, yes. Yes. Here's a new one for you. Last year, you love you, you love you, love you. Oh my god, you're crazy, and they call the top time for a long time. Business? What's that? Business or personal? This, no, this was a technique that oh. I like, yeah. It's like, we love you, we love you, we love you, oh my god, you're suicidal, so we're going to call on you, and basically talk about stuff with them, so we have to talk to you, and so, that's next that, is, that is a new one. Yes. That is a new one. So my advice to any of you is, uh, before you need it, go talk to an employment lawyer, and find out how to document things in a way that is better than I did. Absolutely, and that in any kind of an inkling of that kind of situation, talk to an employment attorney. Right, because that lawyer before you're in a situation, right. so you don't have documents. Did stuff. you have any kind of red flags from him, or was it a flip the switch and now we're nuts? Uh, I was I was talking as if somebody to be turkey and said, "Hey, I think I'm exhibiting my team's exhibiting unconscious bias to me," okay. and the HR person who's not. No, the HR people are there for the company. They are not there for you. If you didn't get that memo, please, see if you can take anything from this talk, take that memo. Said, told they me are there to protect the company. Told me that I had worked with somebody that had listened to them who had 40 years of experience in high school. And I'm like, oh my. That's it. You know? Yeah, my step let me get your resume ready, but it sounds like you'll pass that really quickly. Well, they. They said I could work with them and therefore I hired me and I'm a problem player. But I met a much better company now. I actually have a, a friend of, who's male had this had that happen to him and I advised him to do some stuff with documentation, but same kind of thing, he was too far along. They didn't call him for a wellness check, they just fired him. That's another good tip. Even if you don't think you're on the line for something, if you have any verbal conversations. Recap them in writing. Put it in email. We had a conversation this afternoon. I just want to take a quick opportunity to recap our one o'clock meeting. Here's what we discussed and here's what I got from it. Please let me know if your, if your recollection of this conversation is any different. Because if they don't rebut it, that's your documentation.